we're excited to share a first look at a project we're developing at Ubisoft San Francisco. This is our take on a multiplayer first-person shooter. We need to get you in early and find out what you think. Our goal is to make a best-in-class shooter for you, the players, to compete and have fun with your friends. It's fast-paced firefights meets punk rock mosh pit. We're proud to introduce our new game, Tom Clancy's X Defiant. Your feedback is essential to help us make this game great. Later in this video, we'll tell you how to get involved. But first, we'll get into the action. Today I want to take a look back in time back when X Defiant was in early stages of its development and referred to as the Division Battle Cat. I also want to talk about how Phantoms used to be Wolves, Libertads used to be Outcasts, and much more. Stick around. In July of 2021, Ubisoft announced their upcoming FPS game, Tom Clancy's X Defiant. Slightly prior to that, there had been leaks about the Division Battle Cat, which was slated to be Splinter Cell meets Tom Clancy's The Division in a PvP FPS game. It wasn't too long after that Tom Clancy's X Defiant was announced to the public, and it wasn't too long after that that the name was met with a lot of criticism. People didn't like the particular branding being put on the Tom Clancy name. Fast paced shooter meets punk rock monster. The fast paced shooter portion was to be led by Mark Rubin with previous experience in Call of Duty titles. And the punk rock mosh pit was led by Jason Schroeder who had had previous experience in Rocksmith. It would lead me to believe the game was originally the Division Battle Cat before being changed to a Tom Clancy game simply because at the time the division was like their most popular shooter type of game aside from rainbow six siege and go figure who's rainbow six siege tom clancy so they switched over to that because that was even more popular even their biggest earner probably in the shooter genre or anything so they decided hey the division's a third person shooter we're going first person shooter Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege is doing really well. We're going to go Tom Clancy's X Defiant. Except instead of having this military style shooter that we already have, let's have a punk rock mosh pit. It's actually kind of funny though because some of the skins and stuff that we've gotten, like the ones with the plaid on them and stuff like that, the guitar M4 with the spikes on it, there's a lot of those punk rock mosh pit elements still in the game. After getting a bunch of backlash, they wound up removing Tom Clancy from the name of the game, as well as taking out a lot of the punk rock imagery and stuff from the aesthetic of the game in general. They wound up keeping characters and maps from various Tom Clancy series, such as the Division's Cleaners, Ghost Recon's Phantoms, which were initially called Wolves, and Echelon from Splinter Cell. They eventually switched the healing class, initially called Outcasts, to the Libertad faction from Far Cry. They used to have a green healing aura, which I believe was the previous version of the El Remedio. They also didn't have a passive ability, which is now their healing for yourself and nearby teammates. The Phantoms, or Wolves, also had a way more overpowered looking shield that curved around in almost a semicircle. Echelon originally also didn't have the 5.7 pistol during the Ultimate. The game had closed private alphas in early 2021 as well as multiple closed and open betas in between the announcement of the game in July 2021 and the release of the game on May 21st, 2024. The game was not subjected to a large amount of players to experience netcode issues, problems with partying up with friends, and more until their first open betas which if I remember correctly did not initially have crossplay. Keep in mind this game at one point in time was planned to be put on the cloud console Amazon Luna, which has since been cancelled just like the Google Stadia. Ubisoft literally put on their quarterly reports in 2023 that the game was coming out late 2023. The game had to be delayed for 6 months in order to work on the netcode, which had problems discovered only after it was subjected to a large amount of players in various locations. Literally not having the game have public beta access earlier on over this three year development process came back to bite everybody. As much as keeping it under wraps and everything, when they see everything nearly the same 
aesthetically for the most part as it was previously a year before and even before that for some people they get kind of jaded it loses its novelty the development team was essentially pushed out of the door forced to release the game despite the netcode needing more time they probably needed some more beta tests and everything like that fortunately they've gotten a lot of data and information since the release of the game with 11 million unique players playing it within the first month i believe something like that of course the player base went down a lot especially i i think it was mostly because of the net code a lot of people will say it's bunny hopping a lot of people will say you know it's just the hero shooter thing other people will tell you it's a lack of content some people will say they've never even seen a single net code issue ever in their whole time playing so opinions will vary mileage will vary i think the game was really pressured to be put out last year but upon a beta test they realized that the netcode party system a lot of things really needed a lot of work i think the teams that are working on the game are really small and underfunded from what you would expect from a billion dollar company i really think a lot of people would be surprised at what they're working with and what they're able to accomplish i feel like they have the x defiant team in a position where it's kind of just like an experiment. They're almost like guinea pigs that developed this engine that Ubisoft didn't know until the game was really put in front of the masses with all these different variables, with the internet connections, with different consoles, with different PlayStation network, all these other different things that are at play limitations in terms of networking in terms of server limitations in terms of budgets i think ubisoft looked at games like call of duty like fortnite all these other live service games and thought hey we need to throw our hat in the ring we could really make a lot of money out of this what they failed to realize is the amount of money that you have to invest into a venture like that in the current year 2024 everybody's always on their phone always scrolling always looking for the next thing even when there's some massive outrage thing going on in the media people always move on to the next thing really quick the moment something new happens people are on to the next thing people don't really have any patience these days attention spans really are shorter than ever and as much as you really dislike it that's just the way the market is Imagine you were going out to dinner with some friends that were in town for a limited amount of time and you go to your favorite restaurant only to see that there's a massive line outside and they tell you that you have to wait two hours for you to eat. But your friends want to go to a concert in two hours from now and you still want to eat somewhere. So you're going to choose an alternative instead of going to that favorite restaurant because of that line. As much as you love that restaurant, you just can't go there now at this point in time because of that line. Hopefully by the time the line's gone, they'll still be open next time I want to use that restaurant. Because it would be unfortunate if that restaurant stopped serving food. The game simply needs more time in the oven to get all the features that it truly needs on top of fixing the netcode. Modes, maps, progression systems such as prestige, more camos for things other than weapon levels, rewards for playing the objective, getting rid of things like your teammates blocking your ability to get behind cover, jumping in front of you blocking your bullets, or even making your grenade bounce off their back meanwhile the enemy can slide right through your body like a ghost. A lot of people are quick to say that the game had a lot of time but they fail to consider the fact that the game had a lot of time with a small control group behind the scenes. Even looking at older gameplay, it appears the cleaners had some type of turret weapon that was controlled by AI. This must have been incredibly overpowered, I can only imagine. Then they comically went on to add the spider bot into the game, another artificial intelligence controlled ability that's incredibly annoying and oppressive. Yes, there's counters for it, but it feels more annoying and cheesy than anything else. I think the people who truly see the potential in the game will stick around or will be willing to come back and give the game a try at a later time. But I also unfortunately know that the novelty, the first impression has been soiled for some people who will never look at the game the same again, and maybe never give it another chance. 
I think majority of people will be willing to give it another chance, especially if the consensus is that the game's in a much better place. I think majority of people are going to just kind of follow the pack. I think the next quarterly earnings report from Ubisoft is going to say a lot. I think we're going to get good insight in terms of what corporate feels about the game. That's probably going to be the best source of information into the future of everything. The game is at a point where the community and devs have to weather the storm and hope that the publisher Ubisoft continues to support the game and allows for this to be a learning process and their foray into the live service first person shooter market. I hope you enjoyed this dive into the past of the game X Defiant, something that I and possibly you if you've got this far into the video are passionate about. So consider subscribing to the channel for more FPS content, more X Defiant content, and I hope you have a great day. Take it easy.